Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous, and I am back today with another episode of r slash Tales from Retail. I worked as a grocery store cashier in the early 90s. Most of my difficult customers were simply confused senior citizens, Florida, but one heck of a Karen sticks out in memory. Also one roid rager, but another day for him. We were down the street from a sports center where a number of pros trained. They shopped with no issue until one got himself into big tabloid trouble. He was always great, but the paparazzi were not. While he was shopping, my coworker came back from her smoke break to report Pop outside. Pop got frisky and came in. That was strictly against company policy, but Pop was a jerk about it. He wound up screaming assault when our manager wouldn't let him further into the store. I headed back to give Athlete a heads up, offered to let him leave out the back. He handed over two 20s and said to keep the change. I went shopping for duplicates of his stuff so I could ring it up and not mess up inventory. Also, I had no idea how else to handle getting the money into the store coffers without my register coming up way over. Bad metrics. When I finished ringing it up, a Karen appeared out of thin air. She wanted to know what I was doing. I explained. She saw me put the money in the register and make change. I was legit not sure what to do with it. I couldn't take tips, only baggers. My manager was still arguing with the pop and waiting for the cops. I set it to the side and turned to Karen to figure out what she wanted as her stuff wasn't on the belt. Karen wanted to know what I was going to do with that money and why it wasn't secured in the register. Was I stealing it? I explained. She demands, give it to me. I was a no on that. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with it, but not give it to Karen. She started having a screaming fit that I was stealing from the store and tried to grab the cash. I snatched it up first and stuffed it in the charity bin, figuring that would end that. Nope. She kept screeching and tried to open the charity bin for her money. Two cops arrived about then and split up between the incidents. Karen's story changed as soon as she saw the cops. Also her demeanor. Suddenly, she was super sweet. That was her stuff I just rang up. Now I wouldn't give it or the change to her. I'd stuffed the change in that bin and she was just trying to get it back. I needed to be fired and arrested. Meanwhile, Karen still had a full cart right behind her. I suggested pulling the security tapes. The cops liked that idea. Karen kept smiling sweetly and telling me how I was about to learn what it's like to get fired. I should have given her the money. It would have been no skin off my nose, but now she's going to destroy my life. I have to listen to this crap for quite a while because Pop is screaming First Amendment and it takes time for the security tapes to be pulled and reviewed. Sure enough, I can be seen arriving with a basket slash money well before Karen shows up. She sputtered and insisted both were hers. She was shopping for a friend and I'd been helping her. They pulled more tapes. I was never anywhere near Karen while she was shopping. The cops looked to my manager, does he want her arrested or escorted out? Our manager never liked to approve bans from the store without arrests, so arrest. Karen flipped out, screeching that she'd never touch the money or the stuff. She'll sue! Karen and Pop left in cuffs. They got to share the back of a police car. I think they deserved each other. I don't know what charges, if any, stuck for either of them. Security footage and statements were taken. At least it completely ruined both of their days, and we had their cars towed. That must have been one crazy day to deal with. Having the paparazzi and a famous athlete in there all at the same time that this Karen wants to, you know, take that opportunity to get a little bit of extra change. <laughs> that is just ridiculous to me. I don't know who comes up in their head like, wow, if you don't give me that money that's not mine, I'm going to try to destroy your life. Many years ago, I worked for a family-run chain of department stores. I made it plain to everyone that I was sticking it out, working in crappy retail so that I could earn enough money to go back to college. So the day finally came where I'd scraped together enough money to enroll for a couple of classes. I told my department manager and HR the next day at work and let them know about my new availability. This exciting turn of events occurred a few weeks before the annual store-wide inventory. Every year, I got picked to work on the inventory team. My college classes were scheduled to start at the same time as inventory week during some of the same hours as the inventory shifts. 
I knew how stupid and last minute the scheduling could be, so I made numerous attempts to personally make sure that the assistant store manager and store manager knew about my availability change as well, so that when they had to approve my schedule, they understood why my hours were now different and they didn't try to fix them. My assistant store manager was on the ball and was quick to follow up and recognize my change of availability. The store manager, however, was avoiding me. I stood up to her once and that made me a persona non grata with her. I kept trying to follow up with her and she kept blowing me off slash avoiding me. By her conduct, I already knew that she was planning to screw me over. At that point, college was more important to me than this crappy retail job. I didn't really want to lose income, but I was prepared to walk. At that time, I worked in a department with a very specialized set of knowledge slash skills. There were at most three people in the whole store who could actually man that department, and one person was out on medical leave. So, as expected, the schedules were released the afternoon of the day before inventory. And yeah, my schedule did not reflect my new availability. I hauled butt to the offices to see if the assistant store manager or store manager could fix my schedule. The wagons were circled now. The assistant store manager seemed to have a case of amnesia and didn't acknowledge that I'd mentioned the availability change weeks ago. The store manager, as expected, made it out to be my fault that I didn't get her approval for my change of availability. So my store manager obviously figured that if she ignored my request that I would make college go away and stick with this job that was so obviously my desired career in life. Okie dokie. I let her think that she was winning and worked the first day of inventory. I didn't have classes that day. I came in the next day and worked inventory until the first rest break. All the inventory workers took a break at the same time. Then I put my resignation notice in my department manager's mailbox. She was scheduled for a late shift and wasn't in yet, cleared my locker out, and walked off the job so that I could get to class. When I got out of class a few hours later, all heck had apparently broken loose at the store. There were a couple of frantic voicemails on my cell phone from my department manager. She was the only person who could run the department in my absence, since the other worker was out on medical leave, but the store manager kept department managers so busy with administrative tasks that kept them from working in their own departments that my department manager had no one to run the department after inventory week was over since I walked out. She'd gotten my resignation note, had a private flip out in the stock room, and made a beeline for the offices to let them know how screwed her department now was. She flat out told the store manager that I couldn't be allowed to quit. A later message from her instructed me to expect a call from HR, offering to rehire me. I was perversely amused. I liked my department manager and felt bad about quitting on her, but knowing that the store manager was showing herself to be a proven idiot made my day. I went to my next class. After that class ended a few hours later, there was a voicemail from HR offering to rehire me. I called back. The store manager was having her revenge on me now. HR offered to rehire me, but part-time and in a different department. So obviously she was having revenge on my old department manager as well. I was fine with part-time. If they'd bothered to recognize my availability change that I submitted a few weeks previously, I'd asked for reduced hours. Plus the new job was in a department I'd worked in before. I accepted the offer and immediately began looking for a better job. I knew that the store manager was going to find new and exciting ways to torment me the longer that I stayed. If you ever find yourself as a manager or in this kind of role, take note. Do not treat people like trash. Don't try to manipulate them and pretend you didn't know and try to use the policy and the rules against them. When you won't be loyal to your employees, they sure aren't going to be loyal to you. I work at a clothing retail store and over the weekend I was working as a cashier. My store has a coupon going on where you can get 20% off your purchase if you sign up for our text list. In order to do so, you just pretty much text a number and they send you a coupon. So anyways, I began ringing out an older couple and they asked if there were any additional coupons they could use. I told them about our text list and how they could save 20%. The guy was into it, but he, same as a lot of the older folks that come in, didn't really know what to do, so I offered to set him up on his phone for him. He said okay and handed me his phone, then he looked at me and said, you aren't going to hack my phone and steal my identity, are you? I look at him and said, I'm not, and I guess that wasn't enough for him, so he ended up refusing to sign up for the text list and lost the 20% off. Oh well. You gotta love older people. I mean, at least he's trying to protect his identity. Some people just trust literally anyone with anything. 
and it's it's not a good deal but i think just being informed and understanding things for yourself can really help you so you can get that 20 percent off and keep your own identity safe so this is one of my all-time favorite stories to tell about my work in retail so far so a little info on me i'm very pale i don't look very hispanic in fact my name isn't very hispanic either so i've been told so people usually think i'm white until i pull out my fluent spanish one slow afternoon, I get a lady and her seven-year-old son come into my line. She speaks to me in English and I can hear her accent, but I have a hard time deciding where her accent is from. Since she seems pretty fluent and has no problem understanding me, I continue to speak with her in English. I notice that her son is browsing through one of the magazines we sell and I wait to see if she'll say anything to him. We finish the transaction, I give her her bag, watch her start bagging her items, and she has yet to mention the magazine. So I ask her, Ma'am, will you be buying the magazine? She looks at it and rips it out of her kid's hands. And I'm thinking, ah, crap, she's going to yell at the kid for grabbing something he shouldn't have. But instead, she says, Disclaimer, I don't speak Spanish. I'm just going to do my best through this. So if it's murdered, I am very sorry. Eh, sí, como si fuera a robarme este pinche revista de three dólares, pendeja which was Spanish for, oh wow, I'm totally gonna steal this stupid $3 magazine. Dummy. She tosses it to me and I say in my sweetest voice, Bueno, la revista cuesta $13.99, which was Spanish for, well, the magazine costs $13.99. She looks at me and goes, oh, no pues, wow, hablas español, babosa, which was, oh wow, you speak Spanish, idiot. And I say, parece que sí, que tenga un lindo día, which was, looks like I do, have a nice day. She told me to go F myself and left the store. I used to hate that I didn't look like a typical Mexican, but I've learned that I can use it to my benefit. A lot of the times you hear the situations where people don't think that you know the language that they're insulting you in, usually they feel embarrassed. But this lady was just like, oh wow, good for you, you speak this language. <laughs> no shame. No shame at all. She may as well have just said it in English to her, the way that she was so rude about everything. I work as a manager at a children's birthday facility. The birthday parties end with food and gift giving and oftentimes the host will bring in some snacks like chips to go along with the food they've ordered from us. We always label their items the host has brought in so that their server of sorts knows what is theirs. Anyway, tonight I'm closing and take my 30 in the back room while the second shift manager stays up front. I come back around 7.30pm, our last party has already arrived at 7 while I was on break. Around 7.45pm, their server, an employee, comes up to the front desk and tells me that her party host stuff was mislabeled and was being used for a different party. She says they took their gift bags and chips and salsa and that she was able to take back the gift bags before anyone touched them, but the chips and salsa were already opened. I try to figure out why their stuff was mislabeled, but can't get an answer from my staff, so I just go talk to the host of the party, whose chips and salsa were taken. I apologize to him and tell him that I've discounted their bill after I heard about the mishap, to which he says that isn't sufficient for the lost food. I tell him that I can also offer him free food from our kitchen along with a discount, and that again, I apologize for the mistake. He says he doesn't want the free food, and he'll talk to me later. So I say alright and go call my boss, the owner of the business. He tells me what I offered was more than enough, so I leave it at that. An hour later, the host dad comes up to pay. I show him his bill with a discount, and he tells me it's insulting to him and that he doesn't want a discount at all. He insists I take it off. I do, but I ask him what more I could have done to remedy the situation aside from apologize and offer alternatives. His wife chimes in at this point and says, It's not about the food. It's the principle of it. It's their daughter's special day. And at this point, you guys, I'm tired. I've tried everything, and honestly, it's a freaking bag of chips and a container of salsa. And it didn't even happen while I was on the clock. I say again, 
I understand and apologize, but I'm now a little confused as to what you want from me. The dad says he wants nothing, but that he and all of his friends who heard me offer the discount felt I was insincere and insulting to offer it. I told him that I genuinely wanted to make sure he heard from me face to face so that he knew I was trying to fix the situation ASAP and did not mean to insult him by speaking to him. That's kind of my job. He said he would have rather I not said anything and that it doesn't matter, I'll be hearing all about it on social media. I say, okay, I don't know what you want from me at this point, but I'll go ahead and remove the discount. I informed him that the owner will be contacting him too. He tells me that's fine and he made sure to tip his server because she was fantastic. I said, I'm happy to hear that and I'll let her know. And that was it. It was one of the few times in my life that I've ever encountered someone so determined to be unhappy no matter what I tried to do. Even after asking them what I could do for them, they never answered me. And now they're going to tell my boss that I was insulting and insincere and they're going to blast me on social media because I tried to fix something that happened not even on my watch while I was on my break. That's all, I'm just upset. Usually parents don't get to me, but this one was so personal. I didn't even make the mistake. Ugh, anyway, I just needed to get that off my chest. Okay guys, I need your input on this one. I'm trying to understand why they're saying like, take the discount off, we don't want the food, we don't want anything you can help us with, but like you're insincere and rude and we're gonna complain. Someone explain to me how this makes sense because I personally don't understand, maybe you guys do, let me know. Many years ago, I used to work in a dime store that is now long gone. One of our frequent challenges was dealing with shoplifters. I was working the cash register when an employee came out of the stock room to give me the heads up about spotting shoplifters. What these shoplifters were doing was stuffing merchandise inside other merchandise, which is a no-no. Their goal was to get away with stealing whatever they could without getting caught. Anyway, the shoplifters came to my register, plunked their basket down, and pointedly told me not to touch it. Yeah, right. Then the shoplifters went elsewhere to where I couldn't see them, but a coworker could observe any more shoplifting attempts without being spotted. While the shoplifters were busy elsewhere, I went ahead and pulled everything out of their basket and pulled out all the merchandise they were planning on stealing. I stacked their planned purchases very neatly and arranged what they had planned to steal right on top. Then I sat back and waited while my supervisor hid and watched the fun. The shoplifters came back and started to comment about some other merchandise dice but stopped in mid-sentence when they realized their game was up. All they could do was stand in front of me imitating a goldfish. I asked, is there a problem? I heard my supervisor giggling like mad and the shoplifters turn all shades of red. It was very fun to watch. I like that they were able to win in this situation. <laughs> Obviously when you say like don't touch anything in our cart, like okay <laughs> Are people this dumb? People are people are pretty dumb. We'll, we'll, we'll say they're pretty dumb. But it was nice to see that they were kind of called out in the nicest way possible. And I wonder what they did. I don't know if they just like left or if they actually ended up buying all of it. I'd just like to start by saying that I am not a morning person at all. I work the Saturday morning shift at the local post office. Today I roll into work, still groggy as usual. I open up the post office and a minute or two later this dude comes in with a letter to send asking if it needs more postage. I look at his letter and it has a few older stamps with odd denominations on them. Knowing my sleepy brain, my shoddy basic math skills, and before really looking at the stamps, I tell the guy that I need to grab my calculator to figure it out. Calculator in hand, I inspect the stamps. First one is 49 cents, so I type that into the calculator. Second one is 50 cents, so into the calculator it goes. Third and final stamp is, oh, also 50 cents. I guess that's 149, I say sheepishly. The amused look on his face didn't help the cringe I was feeling. As if I didn't already look like an idiot, I managed to push all of the wrong buttons on the cash register when trying to ring in his additional postage to the point where I had to cancel the transaction and start over again. I can only hope that the guy thought I was just learning my job. I'm not. I've been there for six years, but like I said, I'm not a morning person. 
You know, honestly, OP, I'm not either. And I'm not great at mental math. And I 100% would have done the same thing. <laughs> anyway, that is the last post for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and drop a like and let me know what you thought about these stories in the comments below. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!